how can we catch evil attackers within our networks and the steps that they took? Enter IAAA. If this is the first time that we're meeting, my name is John Good, and I'm a technology professional and trainer. And in this video, we're going to cover the IAAA model, which allows us to track all of a user's steps on our network and lets us retrace what they did and put the story together. If you like this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to show your support. I also make sure to respond back to any comments. So if you have questions or you want to see certain types of videos in the future, just let me know in the comments. All right, let's get into the video. So in this video, the lesson plan that we're going to have is we're going to go over identification and what it is, authentication, authorization, and accounting or auditing. Let's start with the purpose of IAAA. IAAA is a concept you're going to hear a lot about in cybersecurity. You might be saying, well, I know what the American Automobile Association is, but that's not the AAA that we're talking about. We're actually talking about the authentication, authorization, and accounting or auditing of a system and activity. IAAA applies to identifying a user is who they say they are, providing them the access that they need, and then recording every action that they take in case we need to retrace the steps. The first component of the IAAA is identification. Identification is when a user claims to be a specific identity, such as a user named John Smith. Typical ways of providing an identity include providing a username or swiping a smart card. Systems will use the identity provided and they will link back all the activity to that username. For example, if you provided a username such as J Smith for John Smith, the system will note all the actions that you've taken and they will link that back to that username. The second component is authentication. Now that you've provided an identity to the system, the system has to prove the identity is indeed you. You verify the identity by providing a password or PIN personal identification number to complete the login process. The system will then compare the credentials that you've provided to what it has stored in its database of known combinations of usernames and passwords. As you might already be able to tell, the identity of a user, such as a username, is going to be public information because everybody within the organization knows, well, I use my last name, and first initial as my username, but the password has to remain confidential. The system relies on that password remaining confidential. If those passwords get leaked, that then ruins the system. Now that the system has confirmed that the user identity or username and password match the database of its known records, the user has to be authorized or permitted to have certain abilities and privileges based on their access. An example of this would be that if a user can read a file, but they can't delete the file. Privileges are usually assigned based on an access control model. We have three different ones that you'll want to know. With discretionary access control or DAC, we have an owner of a file or object, and they can assign specific permissions to other users or subjects. We also have mandatory access control or MAC. With MAC, it relies on labeling of data. We usually see this in military type environments where they use things like clearance levels or classifications on data. And then you have role based access control or RBAC. With RBAC, permissions are assigned based on your role within the organization, so your job function, or which department you're in. For instance, if you're in the sales department, you're going to have access to sales applications and data. If you're in the HR department, you're going to have access to salary compensation information. Now that users have been granted certain permissions or privileges, we need to track all of the actions taken by that user on the system. Think about if we discover malware on the system and we want to recreate what happened to try to identify how that malware got there we can go back and look at the audit trail and we can see if a user installed a piece of software or where it came from and what happened. The audit trail 
provides us the ability to recreate the story of what happened step by step. The combination of identification, authentication, authorization, and accounting or auditing is extremely important in order to hold users accountable for the actions that they take on the network. If we have a weak process, it's possible for users to claim that something that happened wasn't actually them on the network. Likewise, we have to protect the audit logs because attackers will try to clean up their activity. So potentially, an attacker could delete and create gaps in the audit logs. Think about this. If we're trying to put the story back together and we have big gaps of missing information, we can't actually say with certainty what happened at a certain point in time because there's a lot of missing information. We need to protect those audit logs. Now let's talk about the implementation real quick. We use AAA servers to handle the process of doing the authentication, authorization, and auditing of users' actions. A very common place that you'll see AAA servers would be on the edge of the network for remote users to log in with their network credentials. You might also see AAA servers used on networking equipment. And again, it's to use a single database of login credentials to compare against. Some of the common AAA protocols that you might see would be Radius, Diameter, TACAX, and TACAX Plus. Remember, the IAAA model stands for identification. A user claims a specific identity. Authentication, that user provides a password or PIN number to verify that they are who they say they are, and then the system will check that against the database of known credentials. Authorization, that user is now authorized to do certain actions based on their user account. And then auditing or accounting, we record every step or action that user takes in case we have to put the story back together and see what happened. Question of the day, what are some cyber attacks that you know of where insiders were doing malicious things? You want to look up on the internet and see some other recent examples as well? That's good too. And let me know in the comments what you found. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for the video and so you can get future content when it comes out. And until next time, I'll see you later.